first of all, to start with, let's talk about like, what is it we're trying to do? We're trying to hit a low shot that doesn't go full distance. Okay, so that we can control the ball flight. That's kind of everything that we're going to try and do. Um, so before I even give you any instruction, what's the first bunch of random tidbits that come to mind in order to make a full swing, not create as much speed, in order for you to hit it lower? What, what's your recipe? Start with setup. Setup, I would have my ball just a little bit back uh, towards my back foot. Okay. And fleece. Um, and kind of setup is a little bit more in front of the ball than I would usually do. Well, they'd have to be because the ball went back, right? Every time the ball goes back, the hands end up being more forward relative. Yeah. So definitely, hands forward to this. It might even just stay there. Yeah. Um, other than that. Okay. Cool. And what's what? What are you trying to do in the swing? Whether it's I, well, anything. I, mean, I try to keep it a little bit more shallow and steeper. Yeah, because that was my problem was a little bit risky. Yeah. Okay. Coming down. Okay. Okay, so there's two tr there's two schools of thoughts here. One person might say, hey, we need to hit down on the ball harder okay. in the name of angle of attack. Okay. okay. Um, but that's not the way that the best flighters do it. Okay. That's not Shane Lowry hitting seven iron from 120 that doesn't go higher than Dylan's head. Like, that's not how he does it. He actually does the exact opposite. So let's think about what is it that's going to make this that club create the loft requirements to send this ball low. Like you'd have to take that, what is it, an eight iron? This is a nine. Nine iron, sorry. So take the nine iron and turn it into a six iron at impact, if not a five iron at impact. Okay, good. And now how does that club go through the ground like that without taking a divot? Think about that for a minute. Like how does the club come into the golf ball leaning nine iron into five iron and how do you have to move in order for that club not to smash itself into the ground for a divot suppose on my way up right so if you so hold your arms out in front of you like that okay so here we got the nine iron loft right we have to try and create a six iron loft Okay, so the only thing we really adjusted was here, right? So there's your hands like that. Now, how would you have to move so this basically stays like in a straight line on the wall like that without it getting longer and getting closer to me, right? That's the name of the game right there. How do we oh. deal off this club through the ball without it digging down? I don't want this to have a long swing Cool, that's cool. Where does it go through impact though? Think about that. Think about like the first foot into impact and then the exiting say three or four feet. What's that gonna look like so it doesn't take a divot? All right, so here's an even better one for your head. Imagine that we're on concrete, okay? Okay, so no, no scuffing the club. That ball's on concrete and you're gonna try and hit this low shot. So it's gotta come in, you know, de-lofted, right? And then we have to find a way to control this stuff down here with our body so that it doesn't stop and extend and dig in and create a grind on the bottom of your club. Really the, the rotation that you want. And stand up. And both, right? Trying to find a way to get the wrists that are bent out of the ground without unbending them. And so with the wrist being bent that way, right, that's not a speed thing. So therefore, that's what's going to take the distance off your typical nine iron shot, keeping it this way longer. You hit it lower, 
but because there's no speed coming from that wrist extension, we'd lose our club speed. So therefore we lose distance. Yeah. So let's hit like five balls, seeing what you can do to hit this 124 yellow flag. Because we're turning nine irons into five irons. Tending the balls on concrete so we can't dig into the ground. Hey, really good. Okay, so, um, so if we talk about how this club comes into the ball here for a sec. If we want to have the lowest amount of loft, right, that's simply de-lofting it, as this club comes into the ball, trying to keep it from scuffing the ground involves a lot of legs standing up and body keep turning. So I like everything that you're doing. I just want you to kind of give, have an idea of what makes this club kind of hit the ball like that. What makes it release is the fact that we're pulling up because we're standing up. Right, so the pulling, like getting the club to go lower keeps our ideas on no loft, but then from there getting this out of the ground involves pulling up on the body to pull up on the arms to pull up on the handle. Yeah, and so that's what, like most players, if I went over there right now on the concrete and said, hey, let's go hit some balls off the concrete, you'd go like this to not scuff your club. Right, you'd pull up like that, right? But if you felt as though that you could do that whole thing with your body to pull up and pull this thing out that's actually going to release it for you even though you've turned the nine into the five so you've got the idea of what the club's going to look like and then let's feel like we can stand up to get it out of a divot So we can find a little more speed to this in your stand-up. So if I gave you a feel to something, it might feel like your arms are soft and slow for the shot. But the only way that the arms can actually move is because you're trying to go this way and up more. Right? You try and feel like the arms stay a little bit softer. Definitely going to feel slower.
change directions with your body harder or faster in order to keep the speed from coming from your arms. So arms soft and slow, body turns hard and stands hard at the end. It's going to feel like that's the part that's the whippiest. going to feel closer to a full swing than you think. Love it. So here's the thing, is that we have a concept of trying not to scuff the bottom of the club, delivering like no loft to this golf club. All right, so we're trying to get this thing de-lofted and almost brush against the ground. In the intention of doing that, you start taking smaller divots. Okay. Okay. I am psyched myself out. Don't touch the grass at all. I know, and that has to be kind of like what you're trying to do. Otherwise, we'll get some of those. So it's trying to feel like you can keep this thing de-lofted that way. And the only way you can get speed to that thing is to feel like you can get your body to, you know, get through the shot and get taller. So this might be thinking today that it's like, let's de-loft the club and speed up the pivot. You'll feel it all the way from feet to like up here, trying to speed up the pivot today. Like shots that take less time. Think you're Shane Lowry. Right? Just like... He's just like super quick, like Nick Price, one, two, right? It's almost like if I could take your tempo and put it into Jeremiah and flip you guys, it'd be like right there. Because he's short, quick, like, right? And I want to see if we can create this shot today a little bit more like an elastic stretch snap, like once it's there, go, right? And try to feel as though that you can, you know, control your wrist to control your ball flight, because that's going to be priority number one. Right? in order to find your ball in some of those courses. Right? And then from there, feel like the body's really going back and through. And the through part's trying to stand up so that you can keep this thing under control. But the second that the body stops to stand, and that gets long, long is going to be divots that are not just beige roots. That's it. Yeah, I've and never been one to complain. I just uh, worry about psychologically mm -hmm. trying to do it now. All this stuff. Totally. So if we can focus on that it's soft, slow arms, it's wrists that are trying to hold back, and the only way they can hold back is if you start getting quick and wiry. Let's just call it the quick shot. Okay? And I'm hoping that through developing what we'll just call as like a, another arrow is just like, hey, this is your quick shot. And it's going to be a low one. So your stock shots, don't change them. You got them. Everything's great. This is going to be that quick, low shot, right? And it's just another shot in your arsenal in the event you ever need it. Okay? I think you understand a little bit of if the divot's too big, then this had to let out, that let out because this wasn't quick enough okay so yeah use each shot as a tell for what piece you've got to kind of control for the next one how are these irish bangers doing yeah 
Yeah? Oh, it, you like it now. <laughs> Good. Cool. Falls a little too far back. Yeah. Cool. More open. Cool. Now look up. Look at that yellow flag. See how far it is out there. Like out to the right, I mean, in your visual. Okay, let's hit it. Perception says, I think this is the line. But if I go yes. here, well, what I perceive when I look this way is different to when I look this exactly. way. Exactly. It's all for sure. So I told you. I was saying about the putting, how Nicholas can look this, mm -hmm. uh, yours here, everyone's so freaking different. Absolutely. Called the quick swing. Okay, cool. So fall a little more back. There we go. Now from here, let's just hit it solid. Flights it down, same type of you know curve. But you can think of it this another way that we now have the ball position way back in your stance, and we've aimed your stance more to the left because of that, to make the path of the club kind of go this way more, you're still hitting this ball like down, flighted down with the face open. So think about all the, all the flights that are out there. Normally the person that hits the draw hits the lowest and the person that's the fade hits the highest, right? So the push slice is the farthest ball to the right and highest, and it goes all the way down until you get a low pull hook, right? So no one ever pull hooks at high and very rarely do people flight it down and curve it to the right. But you've built this into your setup so that your path ends up being straight. So now we don't have any crazy shots, but the ball being back influences low flight with a cut. Jeez. Does that make sense? Like, okay. Jesus. Clark. Right. They've learned how to basically throw their arms behind them and use their legs to get them back out in front of them. And that's why they all kind of have that zippy looking swing. Yeah. Right. So the, the longer we go, the lazier we go, the more it kind of flops it up nice and high. Right. So the opposite of that would be like the short bump and run. And that's when you look at Irish golfers most uh, English golfers, right? Short back, short through, zip, zip, flight it down, get it out there. Yeah, right, so it's, it's, a, it's a different tempo. You can see it across the board as those guys come over here to play or we go over there, like you can tell. Oh, like, you know, hard to say that guy came from Ireland swinging it like this, right? The wind would blow him over. 
So I'm seeing all these older dolphins and dolphins that just have like this fancy helicopter arm type swing. Yeah. Like, eh, it's it's come with the territory. It is, and so when that's the, that's the golfer who had to wear a suit, right? You've worn a suit before. Yeah, yeah. You go like this, you're gonna rip it, or like that, you know. So they started to learn how to throw their body, and all of that zigzag stuff is just catching their fast arms, right? It's catching their arms being whipped around their the front of their suit all the way over to here, and this is just ca them catching them again. Versus the other golfers we see now who are using their arms from here to pull all the way through, they rip their suit. Oh, really nice. Nice whack into that one. Good for you. Show me the drive nerd. They went off the ground for me. I didn't see the flight. What was it? Yeah. Okay. That was fat though, right? Okay. Let's get let's get one solid. See what it does. It's just an option to, to, if you have it, because there's a lot of courses over there where when you hit it in the rough, the ball just sits up. You got, like I hit driver out of the rough, if I had to, yeah, yeah. right? Like it just sits right up. It's not, okay. it's not bent grass rough, where it's, it's long like your backyard. Okay. I think, I don't know, psychologically, the four and the two, it's weird. I have the, the four, I feel like I can hit yeah. on the ground. I can't tee it up. Right. I feel like I can tee it up. I mean, hey, most people don't even ever consider this off the ground. Just, I'm saying, hey, there might be a time where you want to use it. I use my one iron off the ground at least once a round. Yeah, playing lesson on Tuesday. Didn't hit a great drive down the right side of Heathland's one. It's like 245, hit a one iron to 20 feet off the ground. I birdied four of the first five holes in my playing lesson. Uh, yeah, tapped in for a one footer, made an eight footer, made a ten footer. So we want to get in front of it, right? Upper body leans forward. Whether you do it at setup or you find the momentum to do it during the swing, up to you.
So from the top of the swing, right, we go up here and we're all rotated and whatever, right? Yes. This one might be the one where you feel like you just un, you lean forward and drop the club on the ball, right? Because if you start to rotate and turn, that's the one that gets the club to go out in order to cut across to create too much fade. But if I take it to the top and I don't unwind this turn and I just lean forward and throw the club into it, I'm going to hit draws. So lean in front to get the angle of attack, less rotation at impact. Hold it back. See how that changed a little bit? Okay, so on the tee, and let's try and build a draw through this idea on the tee. So like a stinger down the fairway draw. So if I have, go ahead and tee it up. So if I've got my stance line, which is parallel to my target line, okay. right? And I go up to the top of my swing, yeah. trying to feel as though that with this move, that the arms and club stay inside that line the most as it comes down. So it's a slide, it's not a rotate. And then from there, the arms come down. I'm just gonna catch it, changes the delivery of the club. Yeah, so take it to the top, hold it up there. Okay, so keep your right shoulder high as you slide all the way in front of it. Just move it so it keeps the slide. Yeah, see where the arms come from? So slide counteracts across the ball slices. So it's kind of funny that we're told not to slide, yeah, yeah, yeah. right? But everybody is supposed to be this big slicer. The more that I slide, the less I turn. The less I turn, the more I fire my arms out to the right, which from your view, you'll see that when I finish this, see how my hands are like over my toes? They're not over here because I turned. You might feel like you keep your back to the target longer. Just slam the club into the ground. It's gonna come from the inside because of it. Draw. Sure, yeah. yeah. Just try to incorporate these pieces into your normal good golf swing. Okay. Looks like maybe you're trying too hard to do too much. You've got a pretty good idea of what we're doing. Go ahead and swing one at it. That's about the height you'd be looking for. Mm -hmm. But notice the ball started to the right, not really much curve, so you definitely had the face, the path in to out on that one. Okay. Okay. So those, and I want you to try to feel as though you can do this similar to the pitching wedge. So I'll set one up here. Come on and take a look from this view. So I've got my target line where the ball is relative to the target line, but you can see relative to me that's totally different. Right? Relative to my feet, the middle of my stance would be there. So think about how far back we really have this, you know, relative to our, like, middle of my feet, like I said, would be there. 
So we've got it back that way. So it's pretty far back, right? So the fact that we can keep that open a little bit, right, or point it out to the left, and then from there, feeling as though that you can make the swing that we've talked about here, leaning almost in front of the ball and then hitting just, just barely getting down on it with no loft, that ball, whoop, that ball starts out to the right every single time. Okay, it always is going to start out to the right of where you're standing. Okay, here it is again. Stance open, ball appears way back because of that, right? And then from here, the same thing. That ball starts out to the right. But because we're catching it so much earlier, this is gonna, like, you're not gonna take your arms and you're not gonna swing too far past this way because the ball's way back there. If the ball was way up here in my stance, that's the one where I'd speed up my arms too long just in order to get to it. So the fact that the ball is back in your stance should change how you release the club into the ball. But we've also talked about trying to keep it this way for low shots, right? That's shorter. The ball being that far back in my stance means that, hey, I can catch it that way because it's supposed to still be going down during that spot because it's so far back. Lost you there? Well, putting it all together, I get it. Okay. One thing start to draw or right. Yeah. And now I'm like, oh. Yeah. Yeah. So, but so the difference is, is that that changes your golf swing relative to the target line because you rearranged your baseline of your feet, which makes it like. Now you're basically telling the Blue Jays pitcher, hey, you've got to actually point over there off to the right, but then throw over here to the left. Like, it's not matched up. What I've done here is I've taken your whole golf swing and left it here and adjusted you to accommodate for the shot we want to hit. So the more that I have the ball back, here, I'll just do it square. The more that I have the ball back, the more I have the hands forward. Notice how that club face is pointed miles to the right. Most people would say that would fade. But the fact that I'm hitting that so early on the circle of how it's going to release, that path's so far out to the right, that ball draws. Push out to the right, curve to the left. Okay, if I hit solid, probably look a little different. So because we don't want the ball to start so far to the left, we open up your stance. So stance is open, ball feels back, and all this is going to do is help you deal off that shot and keep it a little bit lower than normal. It's going to build in the idea that this is going to stick around longer because you're hitting it further back in the circle, not at full deep divot low point, right? That's up here. We're hitting it back here. Perfect for this idea, right? And the fact that it's back there, we have to adjust our swing plane more to the left to play for the idea that, well, that's going to block. Okay. Nice shot. Really good. Like, there's so many things that we can do to a square stance to hit the ball low, but every one that we do ends up either putting curve on it or changing your start line. Because there's where my body sets up, right? That's going to dictate how I'm going to swing through this way, right? But if I all of a sudden move things back over here to hit, now I'm swinging this way. See how that swing plane is totally different than where the target line is? So we're, like, we're taking basic squareness and making it work for us. Hey, if we hit the ball early, we hit it low. But if we hit the ball early, we hit it to the right. So let's just aim to the left. Perfect. And that's how all the best players figured it all out. But now with most of the guys with TrackMan, they'd get you to do all types of other things that are really weird in order to change delivery of the ball by changing this. Yeah. Exactly. Yep, I like this. more open with the feet. Sorry? 
right. more open with the feet. Good. Hands forward a bit. Good. The more you put your hands forward, the more the face points out to the right. There you go. I like it. Okay, so again, like this is just a shot. This gives you an idea of a shot. So if I were to say, hey, here's a seven iron and play this in the forward half of your stance, um, aiming square to the yellow flag. Mm -hmm. Cool. So if we wanted to hit this ball a little higher and maybe have a curve from left to right, yeah, ball goes forward a little bit. Okay, so let's go with a stock shot here. Your stock shot's a bit of a fade. I think the biggest thing that we can do mechanically, but also, you know, for your practice, is still trying to feel like you're getting up faster. Yeah, that you're pretty much jumping into the finish. Jump right up tall as the club goes through the ground. Good job. So we've worked on the low one. I'd like to work on the high one with this, trying to feel like you can stand up in order to feel like you launch it into the clouds. So it's like the the height is going to come from you getting taller better, right? While your lower one was more about you getting turned faster. Okay. So I still like the idea of you trying to feel like that this is wiry, getting you around here in a little quicker time. But then as you do that, really make sure that this right left knee is straightening so that you can jump up and get that way. Okay. 